GoForTheTwo.com. I'm continuing my week one preview of the LSU Tigers and TCU Horn Frogs. I talked about it a little bit today on my radio show. I'm going to go a little bit more in depth right now for you. The game is played in Arlington, Texas. That's the Cowboy Stadium, a neutral site. But this is a big, big ball game opening week for both teams. Let's talk about the Tigers and LSU. They get a new offensive coordinator in Cam Cameron. He comes from the Baltimore Ravens and the progression of Joe Flacco. He was released midway through the season, picked up by Les Miles. He's the former Indiana Hoosier and Miami Dolphin head coach. And Tiger fans are hoping that he can help with the progression of Zach Mettenberger. When you look at Mettenberger last year, he struggled early on in road games. He struggled at Auburn. He fumbled on the goal line. He struggled early against A&M. His best game, in my opinion, though, was later in the year against Alabama at home. The coaching staff at the time allowed him to throw on first and second down. That opened up the play action. That opened up the running game. The ability for Mettenberger to throw on first and second down will be key this year in the vertical passing game. I think the Cam Cameron will help in that. When you look at the running back position for LSU, they're loaded. Running back Jeremy Hill comes back from suspension. Running back Kenny Hilliard and Alfred Blue are both studs. And make no mistake about it, LSU has a very, very strong backfield entering 2013. Another strong component for the offense, the wide receiver position. Last year, they had some key drops. This year, I think they're a strength. Odell Beckham Jr., Jarvis Landry, and Kadru Boone look to stretch defenses. When you look at what part of the LSU Tiger offense is a little suspect. It's the offensive line. They lose four players from last season, but the biggest loss this season coming into this ballgame is Josh Williford. The, the mainstay for that offensive line is listed as doubtful. He had a concussion, so that's going to put a lot of pressure on Zach Mettenberger. They're going to have to throw early in this ballgame to take the pressure off the offensive line. If LSU and Les Miles are going to line up and look to run on first and second down. This could be a long day for the Tigers. Devontae Fields, the defensive end for TCU, is a stud. So look for the Horned Frogs to utilize him and move him around. That's going to put a lot of pressure on the young, inexperienced offensive line for LSU. So we have to see how that matches up. When you look at the defense, only four starters return to the Tigers. The biggest losses, obviously, are the defensive ends, Sam Montgomery and Barkevius Mingo. When you look at the tackles, though, that's the strength. Defensive tackle Anthony uh, Johnson and Ego Ferguson are both over 300 pounds. They look to get double teams, and hopefully those young defensive ends can get a pass rush. When you look at the defensive secondary, Ronald Martin returns. He's going to be the leader, but a big loss is Eric Reed. Eric Reed allowed John Javis to take chances. He had some good linebackers last season, very underrated linebackers. One of the biggest losses, in my opinion, Kevin Minter, a leader of that defense. Now it's going to fall on Barrow and Taj Jones. We're going to have to see the approach that defensive coordinator John Chavis takes in this ballgame. Does he start out aggressive and blitz and try to get some pressure on TCU? Or does he play more zone defense with the hopes of creating turnovers and hopefully forcing TCU to work down the field? That's going to be uh, the matchup for the Tigers defensively. I'm curious to see how John Chavis approaches this ball game. When you look at TCU, they come back with their senior quarterback, Casey Pacal. He started early in the year. Only four games he played. Obviously, he left due to those drug issues. Freshman Trev Boykin stepped up in his place. He played very, very well for the Horn Frog. So if you're a Horn Frog uh, fan, the key get, the question is if Pacal struggles early in this ball game, does head coach Gary Patterson turn to Boykin? Boykin's a little bit different of a player than Pacal. Pacal's more of a drop back passer. Boykin, he has some wheels. He can get outside the pocket, and that might l minimize the pass rush for LSU. So I have to have to see what type of approach Gary Patterson and the offensive staff takes for the Horn Frogs heading into this ball game. 
when you look at TCU as a whole, they're a very disciplined, underrated team. They do not make a lot of mistakes. They really are, they rely on solid defense. Gary Patterson's a very underrated head coach. He's had all offseason to prepare for this ball game. When you look at TCU as a whole, a lot of freshmen played last season. They coming back, they have starts under them, but they're only sophomores. A lot of sophomores load both the offense and defensive side of the ball for the Horn Frogs. So that's going to be a key. This is a very big horn uh, game for the Horn Frogs. This can make their season if they can knock off LSU. When you look at the defensive secondary, they're led by their leader, Everett. He's a ball hawk. Mettenberger has to be careful. For Everett, looking out for double teams and, and double coverage. If you're an LSU Tiger fan, you have to keep your eye out for the defensive back Everett for the Horn Frog. So we're going to have to see how that matchup plays out. But this is a very tough matchup for LSU, especially with the inexperience on the offensive line. I'm going to give my prediction a little bit later in the week. Stay with me all season long at GoForTheTwo.com and NCAABlitz.com. And you can check out my new weekly radio show, the NCAA Weekly Blitz on BlogRadio.com. Stay with me. It's going to be a great season. I can't wait.